Bob Dylan said, a hero is someone who understands the responsibility that comes with his freedom. A social contract limits our freedoms by defining our responsibilities to each other. Henry Ford, you know, the guy who started Ford Motor Company, he put forward a social contract. He said, and I'm quoting, yep, I have a script, there is one rule for the industrialist, and that is, make the best quality goods at the lowest cost possible, paying the highest wages possible. Now, how many watching this, hear that and go, really? Ford? Ford was such a jerk! Well, actually he wasn't. It's just the folks who, you know, want to be against everything, basically, they want to make him out as being a really bad guy. Well, did Ford do everything perfectly or wonderfully? No. But this is what he wanted to put forward. Unfortunately, the Dodge brothers, yes, the brothers who formed the Dodge Motor Company, they disagreed with Ford. They were minority shareholders in Ford Motor Company, and they sued Ford when Ford wanted to lower the retail price of his cars and pay higher wages to workers. So, Ford Motor Company had a bunch of money. And Ford said, okay, I could pay this out to shareholders, or I could use this money that we have to lower the cost of the car and pay more money to the people building the cars. Well, the Dodge brothers were having none of that. No, 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 no. So they went to court, and they sued Ford, and they won. And their winning is why we now have a social contract that says corporations exist only to enrich shareholders. And we have all the evils concomitant to that contract. You might wonder, well, why would the Dodge brothers do that? Because the Dodge brothers wanted to lay their hands on the money that Ford had because they were building their own motor car, motor car company. They didn't want Ford to get even stronger in the marketplace by lowering prices and paying higher wages. That would make things just more difficult for the Dodge brothers. So they sued. Which is why now we have such a huge problem with corporate greed because corporations only exist to enrich the shareholders now before we get too deep into cars and everything that that entails let's look at some other social contracts you know based on various countries because social contracts do vary from country to country so as an example, or several examples, in Egypt, it is illegal to employ a Christian. An Egyptian company cannot employ Christians. In Iran, homosexuals are executed. In Canada, the French province of Quebec is allowed to enact discriminatory, discriminatory laws in the name of preserving their culture. There are some weird social contracts, but they are social contracts. The social contract also extends into our daily lives, saying please and thank you. Not everyone in every country does that. Holding a door open for an elderly person or someone loaded down with groceries. That's something that I have always considered to be part of the social contract. You see someone who's going to have difficulty opening the door, you help them with it. I can tell you, that element of the social contract is no longer adhered to 
by a lot of people living in the city of Toronto. And I'll also point out that the people who live in the city of Toronto, contrary to their belief, are not reflective of everybody else living in Canada. They really are not. Another one. Listening when someone speaks rather than shouting at them in disagreement or protest. Now, how many videos have you seen of that kind of thing? Some group dislikes what a speaker is saying, and so they get into the event and they shout down the speaker. Can anybody say brown shirts? Because that's exactly what Hitler's people did. They would go to places where speakers were speaking that said things they didn't like, and they would shout down the speaker. And then afterward, they would wait for the speaker and beat the living daylights out of that person. For anyone new to the channel, channel, <laughs> there's no T in channel, <laughs> I live in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. I also live on the campus of the University of Toronto. And Toronto is a little bit interesting in that it is the third largest city in North America. Mexico City is first, then New York, then Toronto, then Los Angeles, then Chicago. And it has been the case with pretty much every university since World War II that teachers and students are making a lot of changes to the social contract. If you want a like, huge example, just look at the Vietnam War. And most of the changes that came about relevant to the Vietnam War came about through student protests. And what I want to do is cover a few of the changes that I'm seeing happen now and specifically in Toronto on the campus of the University of Toronto I am seeing it around the rest of the city as well but the point I want to make is my experience does not reflect anything outside of my experience so is this happening at Harvard? Is this happening at University of California? Is this happening at Texas University? I don't know, because I'm not there. So what I am speaking to is solely the things that I am seeing, the things that I am experiencing. And a big one is, people on the campus are inclined to walk on their left. And this is really odd because Canada, we have a social contract where we drive on the right, we ride our bicycles on the right, and we walk to our right. And I know that the reason it's happening is this concept of, well, we should just tolerate whatever anybody else does. And the University of Toronto has a lot of students from China. And the Chinese social contract is very different. One, they walk to their left. Two, they don't care about anybody else on the sidewalk. They will just stop in the middle of the sidewalk and have a conversation, and it doesn't matter to them that they're blocking the sidewalk. Now, these are things that are contrary to the Canadian social contract. And if it makes me intolerant, so be it. This is Canada, not China. And pretty much the only thing we have in common is that both countries start with a C and end with an A. And everything else is really different. Let me give you an example. And an example that specifically does not involve a foreigner of any stripe. Okay? This was a tall, white, bearded fellow. When he spoke, no accent, so I am guessing, could be wrong, but I am guessing this is someone who already is Canadian, probably born and raised here. I'm walking down the sidewalk on Huron Street, 
and this fellow is walking toward me. I am on the right side of the sidewalk. Right as opposed to left, rather than right as incorrect. So I am walking to my right. He is walking to his left. He looks at me, sees me, and goes back to playing with his phone. Looks at me a second time, sees me, and goes back to playing with his phone. Never bothers to move to his right. Continues walking down the left side of the sidewalk. Until he walks into me. Now, I had stopped and just spread my hands like, okay, what are you going to do? And he spreads his hands and looks at me and goes, what? Well, my answer was to tell him, okay, this is Canada. You should be walking to your right. That's how we do things here. His reply was a combination of leaving the sidewalk to walk on the grass to continue moving to his left and saying that there is no right or wrong side of the sidewalk. Well, sorry dude, but clearly you think that there is. You, you can stand there and say there isn't, but all of your behavior indicates you believe that there is a correct side and that you are right. Talk about a moment for cranium X rectum. But this guy, instead of waking up and realizing he's wrong, no, he doubles down. No such thing as a right or wrong side. Okay. And what, you expect that I'm just going to get out of your way? I don't think so. And, you know, I get it. Some people are going to say, well, where's the problem? Well, okay. One, if there is no right or wrong, why did he insist on walking into me? He looked right at me. He knew I was there. And he decided that he was going to be a jerk. That he was going to walk into me. Well, you need to think twice about that. Not every person you encounter is going to be friendly about it. Because that is an attack. You might not mean it as one, but what you mean is irrelevant. What matters is how the other person takes it. And if they think it's an attack, you should expect them to defend themselves. And this brings me to another point. There are a lot of students on this university campus who are openly claiming that there's no such thing as right or wrong. There's, there, there are no, there's nothing that's always right and there's nothing that's always wrong. Oh, okay. That these are somehow arbitrary contract or constructs that I choose for myself what is right and what is wrong. Oh, okay. And so everyone who claims this would agree it'd be perfectly fine for me to beat the living daylights out of this guy that walked into me. There's no such thing as right or wrong. So it's perfectly okay to beat up on somebody. It's perfectly okay to, what, stop you in the street and take your money. Or, you know what, I'm just in a bad mood, so I'm going to slap or punch everybody I meet. Because there's no such thing as right or wrong. And, as you can guess, do that, and they're, oh, what are you doing? You can't do that. And, even more so, just disagree with them. Just say, wait a second, you're wrong. And they go ballistic. Oh, you're intolerant. You, you don't believe in diversity. You, mm, no. I believe that there are things that are right and there are things that are wrong. Taking something that belongs to you without asking for it, without your permission, is wrong. Lying to you is wrong. And absolutely, with no cause and no reason, beating up on you in any way, shape, or form is wrong. The only time it becomes acceptable is when you are defending yourself. And for me, the question is, what do you do when you encounter people who want to make these kinds of changes? And my answer 
as you might guess, is to look to the pet column. What is personally empowering, both to me and to the other person? Because I believe, I firmly believe in 100% personal responsibility that is supported by community accountability. So let's look at it. One, I'm honest. There really is right and wrong. Stealing is wrong. Murder is wrong. Beating up on people is wrong. And when it comes to this whole thing about walking down the left side of the sidewalk, I make the effort to move people out of my way. I don't get out of your way. I'm in the right. In this country, I am in the right. I am following the social contract by walking to my right. And yes, that does mean that I am willing to walk into people. I just had it happen. Two, three, four days, whatever. I'm walking down the street, and this kid is coming at me who certainly outweighed me. He's 300 pounds if he's an ounce. And he's futzing about on his phone, looks up and sees me, and goes back to futzing about on his phone, and ended up walking into me. He walked into me. He saw me. Plenty of room on the sidewalk for us to pass without encountering each other. But he wasn't getting out of the way. And he walked into me. And he bounced. It's one of the advantages of weighing 250 pounds. It's pretty hard to it's pretty hard to move me out of my path. Of course it's equally hard what I have written down here on the script. Even if I wanted to move for some of these folks, it's pretty hard to move when people are walking four wide down the sidewalk. They're taking up the whole sidewalk. And I refuse to move. When I encounter kids, and sorry folks, I don't care if you're 19 or 20 or 21, you are still a young adult, and me at 56, you are still a kid. And I, again, to be honest, even I knew when I was in my early 20s, yeah, I'm an adult and I'm free to do what I want, but in terms of experience, I was still a kid. And I know it even better now because me being a kid led to a lot of bad choices. Here's the point of the whole thing around a social contract. It, it gives us some boundaries, it gives us some ways to behave. And if you choose to break the social contract, you are choosing. It is your choice. You are free to make it. You are also free to experience the consequences of making that choice. called free will. You can do what you want. You, you want to believe that there's no right or wrong, and so you get to, what, spit on me or attack me in any way? Okay. But then I get to defend myself. And you might be unhappy at the results. And that's really the crux of the issue, isn't it? We have a social contract. And there are lots of folks, young and old, who think they can dish out any crap they want. And everyone else just has to accept it. Oh, because you can't tell me to be quiet. Who are you to tell me to take my feet off the seat? I'm a citizen in this country, just like you. The big difference is, I recognize that there is a social contract. And now I'm standing here telling you, you need to start living by it. Because this is a cranium X rectum moment for everybody who's watching this far along. You want to start making changes to the social contract, you need to recognize you are not alone in this country. You are not alone in the United States. You are not alone in Germany. 
You are not alone in pick a country. There are lots of other people that live there. And we might put up with a little bit of your BS, but eventually you're going to come to a point where this whole idea of I'm going to do whatever I want and consequences be damned, hmm, you're going to meet somebody who is unwilling to tolerate what you are doing. And then you're going to have to live with the changes you are advocating. If you are advocating there's no right or wrong, and you meet somebody who treats you that way, don't cry about it. 